the scandal of contaminated blood in the 1970s and 80s. Families respond to the news that inadequate research has been used until very recently. Government officials have been using a discredited report into the use of contaminated blood products in the 1970s and 80s, despite assurances that the report would be taken out of circulation. The BBC has learned that the report issued in 2006 was still being used earlier this year. Theresa May announced in the summer that there would be a thorough inquiry into the scandal, which saw haemophiliacs and other patients infected with HIV and hepatitis C, causing the deaths of around 2,500 people. Our health editor, Hugh Pym, has the story. Carol Grayson's husband, Peter, was a haemophiliac. Because he was given contaminated blood products in the 1970s and 80s, he developed HIV and hepatitis and died at the age of 47. The biggest hope that there were, the truth would come out... that they Carol has campaigned for decades for a full um, public inquiry into the scandal which claimed 2,500 lives and ruined thousands more. At last, that's about to happen. She's uncovered hundreds of documents which she says reveal an official cover-up. I think there are huge implications for government. The, the bottom line for government is they don't want to pay compensation because there are very high numbers of people both infected and affected because you've got the infected haemophiliacs and you've got the affected family members. Blood products for haemophiliacs and transfusions were imported from the US. Some were infected by donors, including prisoners. In 2006, the government published what was billed as a definitive report, but some original documents had been destroyed, so key information was missing. The BBC can reveal, however, it was still in use this year. In August, Sir Chris Wormold, the top civil servant at the Department of Health, wrote that the report has not been used by officials in recent years and will not be used in the future. But the BBC has seen a letter written this year by a health minister which did refer to the report and included a web link to it. When Sir Chris was told, he apologised and said it wouldn't happen again. The former Lib Dem minister, Baroness Featherston, who received the letters from the civil servant, yes, said it was shocking that even this year misleading information was being put out. He apologised because he, he himself had been part of what the community has suffered since day one. Obfuscation, misuse of facts, lies, rebuttals, refusing to acknowledge, like almost incapable of listening. The Department of Health said the independent inquiry would ensure victims and their families got answers. For Carol, the long battle with the authorities has come at great personal cost. At the end of the day, taking my family life away. That's the reality. You know, I mean, I started this as, as a young woman. You know, I mean, I'm now going towards retirement and, and, and there's still no justice. Carol wants to pass on all her documents to the official inquiry. She can only hope it gets to the truth of what's been described as the biggest disaster in the history of the NHS. Hugh Pym, BBC News.